Hi, my name is Ed Gaskin, and I'm the Executive Director of Greater Grove Hall Main Street. And I'd love to show you around Grove Hall and what we've done to transform this community. The Boston Ballet came to us as part of their outreach program to bring ballet to neighborhoods like Grove Hall. After listening to them, I said, you want to bring ballet to Grove Hall like this? This photo represents Grove Hall. Urban, young, talented, gifted, energetic. This is one of the dancers from the dance school on the block where the photo was taken. Grove Hall dates back to the colonial period. What you see here is a mile marker from the colonial period. It measures the distance from Grove Hall to Boston. Prince Hall Freemasonry is the oldest recognized and continuously active organization founded by African Americans. Prince Hall Freemasonry had its beginnings on March 6, 1775. Prince Hall lived from 1748 to 1807. He was an abolitionist and a civil rights activist. He, along with 14 other free black men, were initiated into Freemasonry. These men later organized African Lodge No. 1 on July 3, 1775. In 1784, they petitioned the Grand Lodge for a charter, and it was granted, and African Lodge No. 1 became African Lodge No. 459 of Boston. The organization laid the foundation for African American citizenship, education, and for the improvement of the conditions of blacks. For more information, go to the Prince Hall website or visit the Prince Hall Masonic Lodge Museum. The name Grove Hall comes from the name of the mansion of the wealthy merchant Thomas Kirby Jones, built around 1800 on a knoll overlooking the intersection of what is now Blue Hill Avenue and Washington Street. This area remained largely rural in character during the first half of the 1800s. However, after Roxbury was annexed to Boston in 1868, it developed more rapidly from 1906 until 1950s. Grove Hall and surrounding areas were important centers of Jewish life and religion. In 1950, there were about 70,000 Jews in Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan. This was the largest Jewish community in New England, even though some families had moved to Brookline and Newton over the previous two decades. As key institutions such as Hebrew Teachers College and four schools, along with several synagogues, moved or closed in the 1950s, this triggered an even larger movement to the suburbs. In 1958, Mishkan Tifla, which had been one of New England's leading synagogues, moved to Newton. Grove Hall was home to civil rights and black power organizations such as the Black Panthers, the SNCC, Operation Exodus, the Nation of Islam, specifically Minister Louis Farrakhan, Minister Malcolm X, and the Mau Mau. Masid al Khalan and Muhammad Mosque No. 11 started out as a synagogue and were later leased by the Nation of Islam, where Minister Malcolm X and Minister Louis Farrakhan both started. They relocated from their place on Interval Street to Washington Street. In order to understand Grove Hall's current business district, you have to look at the 67 and 68 riots. In 1967, Mothers for Adequate Welfare protesters chained themselves inside of the local welfare office as a protest against what they felt were abuses by the system and because their previous complaints went unheard. They wouldn't let anybody in or out and eventually the police decided to act when they felt the white office workers might be in danger. They charged the doors and they pulled the protesters out to clear the building. While this was occurring, more police cars came. As more police came, this attracted more bystanders. Then someone yelled out the window, they're beating our women. And between the protesters and the police scuffling, the next thing you knew, a riot had broken out. In 1968, Grove Hall again experienced riots with the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. As a result of the 67 and 68 riots in Grove Hall, what was once a thriving black community with a thriving black commercial business district was devastated. As the neighborhood was transitioning, there were more absent and neglectful landlords, and the lack of black-owned businesses in the black community, the daily frustration of racism, all set the stage for the riots. Two riots, white flight, block busting, and redlining destroyed the community. Boston elects a new mayor for the first time in 26 years, Mayor Martin Walsh, and Greater Grove Hall Main Street selected me as the new executive director. I convinced Mayor Walsh to visit Grove Hall during his first 100 days. The mayor came to see what would be the largest restored project in the city's history. This would become a productive working relationship between Mayor Walsh and myself. 
This is what the Greater Grove Hall Main Street's homepage of its website looked like when I started. This was a tough beginning. The Greater Grove Hall area was one of the poorest areas based on census tract data. It had the largest amount of public housing in the city. It was also the area of the city that was responsible for the most gang violence, prevalence of guns, and homicides. The commercial vacancy rate hovered around 20%, meaning one of every five storefronts was either vacant or abandoned. When I was interviewed by the Boston Globe, I was asked, how will you handle the challenges? I asked, what challenges? The reporters said the shootings and the trash. That was the reputation we had to change. One day, someone said there's been a drive-by outside. I thought they were using the term drive-by in slang for something else. When I went to look, there was actually a drive-by. Police cars, detectives, yellow police tape, evidence tags and shell casings on the pavement in front of my office door. When it came to business mix, what was once a thriving, diverse business mix was now primarily non-profit and human service organizations, lots of barbershops and hair salons, nail salons, bodegas, convenience stores, churches, fast food places, and liquor stores. I began working immediately, creating four goals. First, a focus on economic development, increasing the success of existing businesses, and attracting new businesses to the area. Second, to help blacks become producers of technology and not just consumers of technology. Third, to make the area cleaner and greener. And fourth, to focus on improving the quality of life in the community. It was obvious the area was suffering from deferred maintenance. My thought was, no one is going to shop in the district given the way it looked, and given the shopping alternatives of malls, shopping centers, and online shopping, the goal was to fix the physical infrastructure so either people would shop more frequently, or when they were shopping in the area, they would stay for a longer period of time. One day, when talking to Public Works about replacing some sidewalks in the area, the man told me that they hadn't been there in 20 years. I thought that was impossible, given that's their job, and he said that he hadn't. And to prove his point, he pointed to a tree that had grown up and the roots had destroyed the sidewalk. He asked me, how long do you think that takes? One year? Three years? Five years? I'm telling you, we haven't been there in 20 years. When I started, 13 of the street lights were out which is why the business district was so dark. This was surprising because street lights are supposed to be replaced within 24 hours because it's a traffic safety hazard and it's also a public safety hazard. So even the smallest things like the rusted metal frames of the trash cans needed to be painted. It would have taken myself about five minutes and a can of spray paint to paint them, but because they're city property, I needed permission. It took about a year and a half for the city to get around to painting the metal frames on my trash cans. Finally, we are launching Main Street makeovers, starting with Bowdoin, Geneva, and Dorchester, and Grove Hall, there you go. The Main Street makeover took several years and included the following. Renovation of municipal lot number 23, Grove Hall Plaza re-landscape, 14 new bike racks, 18 new trash cans, 7 new benches, 114 new banners for the district, 8 new trees, new fences, new Welcome to Grove Hall sign, new parking signs, new crosswalk, new traffic calming interventions, new crosswalk at Blue Hill and Castlegate, new pocket park which is now the Grove Hall Plaza, street lights were fixed, graffiti was removed, Sidewalks were replaced in key areas, sidewalks were power washed, potholes were filled, city owned lots were cleared, uh, crosswalks were restriped, trees trimmed, tree pits mulched, the intersection of Blue Hill and Quincy Street was resurfaced and redesigned, the intersection of Blue Hill and Warren Street was also resurfaced, the sidewalks were made ADA accessible from Dudley and Blue Hill Avenue to Warren Street and Blue Hill Avenue, and the Wonder Block building was renovated. And here are some other things that we fixed.
economic development. When it comes to economic development, we undertook many initiatives to accomplish our economic goals. Here's a few. We created an architectural walking tour. We created the Roxbury Memory Trail app. It's a self-guided tour that takes you through Grove Hall and Nubian Square to see 120 historical sites from the colonial period to the present. Historic Toll Baptist Church, which was founded in 1840, is the oldest direct descendant of the African Baptist Church, which was founded on Beacon Hill in Boston, Massachusetts in 1805. The church is now located in the Roxbury section of Boston. Throughout its history, Toll Baptist Church has served as a forum for champions of human rights and dignity, such as William Lloyd Garrison, Frederick Douglass, Reverend Leonard A. Grimes, Reverend George Washington Williams, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and others. And we created a mural tour. Business district visioning. We wanted to create an iconic business district like the French Quarter or 125th in Harlem. We created an overarching theme and then identified potential businesses that would fill out that theme. Commercial development. When it comes to commercial real estate development, we are involved with every development project in Grove Hall from conception to implementation. We play an active role in terms of recruiting developers and contractors. We are proactive in pitching projects. The Harvard Street Neighborhood Health Center. The product we are most excited about is a new Harvard Street Neighborhood Health Center and housing because of what it would do for the community in terms of healthcare services, housing, and economic impact. Showcasing African and African American founders of technology companies. In terms of our goal of helping blacks become producers of technology and not just consumers, we started showcasing African and African American founders of technology companies. Typically, these events are all white with a few people of color. Ours was just the opposite. Almost all black with just a few whites. It was quite a feeling to have all the winners be black teams. We have also gone on to research and publish what it would take to increase the number of black founders in Massachusetts because now we underperform. We have less than the national average of black technology founders. In terms of our goal to make Grove Hall cleaner and greener, we wanted to transform a median that was bare into something greener and also provide better stormwater management, thus the Green Median Project. There was no reason the median in Grove Hall couldn't look as nice as the ones in the Seaport District. Creating a Green Zone We studied green zones across the country and developed our own methodology for creating green zones based on best practices. It was inspired on the fact that after we did an environmental audit, we found that although Grove Hall only consisted of 3% of the city by geography, but it accounted for 38% of the brownfields, we discovered how polluted the air was and other environmental hazards. We, so we are calling for an audit to determine the environmental hazards in the area and the opportunities for sustainability and resilience. This information was used by a student team at Northeastern led by Greg King of TSK Energy Solutions to create a story map. Our analysis of Grove Hall is captured in a dynamic and interactive web mapping application format. This tool provides insights into the physical infrastructure's geospatial distribution and highlights the community's unique characteristics, main environmental issues, and opportunities for improvement. Improving the quality of life in the Hispanic community. Grove Hall is about 63% Black, 30% Hispanic, and the rest being other ethnic groups. We wanted the Hispanic community to feel included, so we made our banners in Spanish and English. We developed material on employer rights so they wouldn't fear hiring Hispanic workers. We testified on the importance of language access, and we did programs such as our program for Latina business owners. We also switched to WhatsApp and text to communicate versus email because it was used more in those communities. Public art. After learning there was a relationship between public art and economic development, and upon learning Grove Hall was in a public art desert, we started investing in public art. The CVS display window became a gallery. We added painted utility boxes and murals, and we even created a mural tour.
We invented a new type of mural that hangs on the side of the building. It is less expensive and lets people who aren't artists display their work. We used the advertising space on bus shelters to exhibit photos that included the artist's name, work, and was branded Greater Grove Hall Main Streets. We turned our murals into billboards, which are on display at Logan Airport. We sponsor Grove Hall in Color, a community event focused on the arts, and we have been supporting graffiti or street artists. We added holiday lights in a more of an artistic public art style. When it comes to community development, we engage in and sponsor activities that build community. This is a photo of an event, Circle the City, where the city closed down the street. We did it again last summer with another program called Open Streets. Cut and Curl Back to School event. This is where the school-aged boys get a free haircut and girls get a free press and curl. Everybody gets food, a book bag, and school supplies. We sponsor community events such as Halloween and Christmas parties for children. We sponsor Kwanzaa events. We sponsored an after-school program for teen girls called Redemption. It took place in one of the stores of our businesses. After completing the Grove Hall Plaza, we produced a summer concert series outside one of our restaurants. We developed a banner program to recognize black women leaders from the colonial period to the present. Here's an example of Bishop Barbara Harris, the first woman bishop of the Episcopal Church. Well, today at the State House, a special honor for 200 black female leaders and pioneers from Massachusetts. The Black Women Lead Project recognizes women who made history by becoming the first in their respective industries. Thanks to a grant from the Cummings Foundation, we've been able to donate $100,000 to local nonprofits and individuals. When it came to COVID, we helped establish a testing and later vaccination site. We also developed a business-specific newsletter for which we won an award. At the peak, we were part of a group giving out 3,000 cases of food per week. We were giving them to seniors, people in halfway houses, sober homes, and churches who had pantry programs. We were invited to be part of a coalition that worked on increasing the number of minority businesses getting PPP grants. Finally, we advocate for our community through writing and speaking. You can see here a selection of articles published on business. We have advocated for the community through the political process. We typically attend 100 community meetings a year. We've been asked to testify at hearings, write policy positions, serve on transition teams. We recently co-wrote a piece of legislation on our Green Zone initiative, and it has been successfully introduced into the House. We conducted a workshop at the State House for the Advanced Manufacturing Caucus. I hope you've enjoyed your tour of Grove Hall. We didn't have time to tell you about what makes Grove Hall great, like our 18-hole golf course, or Franklin Park, which offers year-round activities such as the Kite and Bike Festival, the Elma Lewis Playhouse, among many other activities. We have a zoo, two health centers, Grove Hall Mecca, a shopping center with a grocery store, drug store, and we have two banks, one being the headquarters for the largest black-owned bank in the country. We're only 15 to 20 minutes away from downtown Boston and 15 to 20 minutes away from the ocean. We have the state's first cannabis business owned by blacks. We have Future Chefs, a program to help kids in the restaurant industry. And we have Commonwealth Kitchen, one of the nation's best known food incubators, where food is their business and equity is their mission. 
For those concerned about climate change and rising sea levels, we're 150 to 200 feet above sea level. We have lots of opportunities for kids. We have a new youth center being built, public and private school options, numerous houses of worship representing several faith traditions. Grove Hall is a great place to be, and with your help, it's going to get even better. Join us as we make Grove Hall the neighborhood of the future.